Hey everyone, so today we are doing a little review on something called electron configurations. So if you remember from last year, this is our thing like 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, right? And it helps us figure out the layout of the electron. So if I go up here and I look at let's say nickel, it has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d, and it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons in. So let me just show you what this looks like in the atom and what this is actually showing us. Okay, and it's going to get a little crazy in here. So here is our nickel nucleus. And the first thing it says is 1s2. So remember that s orbital looks like an s. It's in the first energy level. And 2 is how many electrons it has. Okay. 2s2, second energy level. Okay, S, so it's a circle, and there's two electrons in that guy as well. Now we're in 2p6. Remember that the orientations, there's three orientations of those p orbitals, which look like double dumbbells. So there's one orientation, there's two orientations, that should be in the second level, okay? My drawing just is not fantastic. And that's three orientations, and remember, each orbital gets one electron before they start doubling up. So that is the 2p6. Now we have 3s2. So now I'm in the third energy level with two electrons. 3p6 time. So again, remember that's that big double dumbbell, or single dumbbell, sorry, but just with three orientations. And remember, each orbital gets an electron before they start doubling up. So that's why I'm filling it in, in that order. Now we have 4s2, right, which is a higher energy level, but there's only two electrons. Okay, now it's time for 3d8. Remember, 3d8 is a double dumbbell shape. So there's one in the third, there's two in the third, there's three in the third, and there's four in the third. But remember, I have my donut one, so I'll draw that one as well. Okay, so you can see it is a mess in that third energy level. And again, now I'm just kind of drawing randomly because I have no idea where my orbitals are. But each one gets one, so each of those five orientations gets one electron, and then uh, we start doubling up two three. Okay, so this is what the atom looks like with all these electrons and probability maps. As you can see, it's a mess. And that's what this electron configuration shows us. Okay, uh, it tells us how many valence electrons we have as well. Remember, valence electrons are the last electrons in the outer level. And for nickel, that just happens to be two, right? Uh, four is our last energy level. So it has two valence electrons. So that's kind of nice when we get into these transition metals where we have no idea what the valence electrons are, these electron configurations really help us out with that. So let's go ahead and get this review going. If you remember, we got to set up our periodic table. So we get rid of that helium and we move it over here. Okay. And if you remember correctly, this area right here, this long rectangle, that looks awful. You could blame Mr. Dahmer and his awful drawing skills. So let's try this again. Come on, fine motor skills. Don't fail me now. Awesome. That's our S orbital. Okay. I'll do our P orbitals are in this nice. Hey, now I changed the color. Anyway, the S orbital or P orbital, sorry, is this nice block over here. 
Let's see what color. Ooh, blue. Let's go. This transition metals right here, or this mixture of metals is your D orbital, and then this guy down here. These lanthanides and actinides are our F orbitals. Okay. So we got this all figured out. Let's go ahead and let's start doing some electron configurations. So we read the periodic table like a book from left to right, going down each line, and we start right here with hydrogen. So if I were to want the electron configuration of hydrogen, first I state what row I'm in, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm in the first row. I'm in the s orbital. And then that exponent is just how many elements I'm into the row. Well, with hydrogen, I'm just one element into the row. So it's 1s1. If I were to do helium, right, first row, s orbital. But now I'm in the second electron in. So I'd be doing two, like so. Okay, so that's pretty simple. First row, s orbital, one. But what if we keep going on and going down to some longer uh, elements farther down the periodic table with more electrons? Well, let's look at that. So we are going to go ahead and uh, let's look at carbon. Okay, again, we go from left to right. Well, I'm starting here, and I got to get through this first line. So I'm going to go ahead and say 1s2. First row, s orbital brings me through that whole first line. Now I'm starting a new line. So now I got to go 2s2. I'm not going to go all the way through because I hit a p orbital here at one point. So I'm just going to go 2s2 to get through that line. Now I'm over here, still second row, but now I'm in the p orbital, and I got to get to carbon, which is one, two electrons in. And that's the electron configuration for carbon. Okay, and then if you look, if I look at all my last energy levels, which is second, and there's four electrons, it's got four valence electrons, which makes sense because it's in the one, two, three, fourth. Let's go ahead and let's do calcium down here now. Again, we're starting from the beginning. 1s2. Through that first line. 2s2. I gotta get through all these P's, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, which makes up our sublevel electrons as well. So we gotta get through that at 2p6. Now I'm in the next row, which is 3s, sorry. 2, then I gotta get through this guy, which is 3p6, and now I, again, I'm trying to get to calcium, so now I just ended at 4s2, okay? So that is calcium, again, and its last energy level, it's got two electrons, so it's got two valence electrons. Now, we're gonna go to this d orbital. Now. Again, this is where it gets tricky. We go 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and you're going to think 4d10, but really it's 3d10, okay? And then that is just because it's a lot easier just to go up a higher level and fill two electrons first, and then we'll hop back down and start filling in this 10d orbital area right here, okay? So that's the only reason why it does that. Then we'll go 3d10, we'll pop back out here, and it'll be 4p6 again. And then 5d, or 5s2, 4d10, 5p6, 6s2, and then we end up going down here into our 4f region. Remember, this whole uh, lanthanide and actinide series is actually stuck in between here. We just take it out so that the periodic table isn't so long. So we go 6s2, 4f14, and then we pop back out where we started, which would be 5d10. 5d10, 6p6, 7s2, 5f14, and 6d, however many we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do tungsten here, which is w because it's named after 
Wolfram. I'm not sure why it's named after Wolfram, but that is why it's W instead of like TU, because that would make sense, but no, not for chemists. So anyway, we're going to go to tungsten. So let's go ahead and do that, and I'll show you the shortcut. So we got 1S2 through the first line, 2S2, 2P6, 3S2, 3P6, 4S2, and remember we get here, so now it's 3D10, 4P6, 5S2, 4D10, and I'm room in, 5P6, 6S2, and now this is where we get to our lanthanide series. So 6S2, remember we hop back down here to 4 at 14 to get through that whole shindig. And now we pop back into our D orbital again, which is 5D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5D, 4. Okay, so long, long electron configuration. But let's say I didn't want to do that, and I just wanted to do a nice little shortcut. Well, we could do the noble gas electron configuration shortcut. Okay, so what you do is, hey, say we're looking for tungsten here. All we do is we go up a row and pick the noble gas in that row. So in this case, the noble gas we would pick is xenon. So we go ahead and pick xenon. We put how many electrons are in xenon, which in its neutral atom is 54. And now that is our new starting place. So that's real nice. So that pretty much takes care of every electron configuration beforehand. So now we're at xenon. So now we'll go, starting from there, we'll go 6s2. We'll go 4f14. And then we'll go 5d1234. 5d4. Okay. And then if I asked you how many valence electrons are in tungsten, you would say... Right, two. The highest level it's got is six, and uh, it's only got two valence electrons. Okay, so these guys are super tricky, but that's okay. Let's do another shortcut for one of them. Let's make it difficult. Actually, we'll do an easier one. Let's go silver. Okay, if I were to look at silver, it's noble gas that I would use. Remember, we go up a row and we start with krypton. 36. Okay, Krypton 36, so we're starting there. Then we go 5s2, 4d9. Okay, 49. Now, I will tell you this what silver likes to do. Silver, since it's got, it's very close to filling that d orbital, okay, it just put in a ton and ton of energy into trying to fill up that d orbital. But, okay, it's not, it's close, it's almost filled, it's almost balanced. So what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna go ahead and get rid of an electron from the S orbital and make this 10 and then make this guy one instead. So it'll donate an electron from that S orbital just to make that balance because it, they're kind of OCD and they wanna make sure that everything is uh, balanced as possible, which if you could balance that D orbitals, then do it. Okay, so that explains why silver has that plus one charge usually because it's wanting to get rid of that last s orbital and then give it a plus one charge, okay, so that it's nice and balanced. So that's why silver always has a plus one charge. Kind of the same dealio with zinc, right? It ends up being like 4s2, 3d10. Well, it's really wanting to get rid of that, those two s orbitals, so it's got that filled d orbital underneath, okay? So that's a nice little exception that you'll see. If you could fill that D orbital, go for it. So anyway, that is, oh, let's do one more uranium. Let's do that as far as um, shortcuts go, okay? So uranium, remember that that lanthanide and actinide series is shoved into that periodic table right at lanthanide and actinide, okay? It's shoved in right here. So if the fourth row would go in here, 
The fifth row would go down here. So the noble gas that we would use is radon. So we will use radon, which has a atomic number of 86. And then we could start at radon. I don't know why I said it like that, radon. 7s2, 5f3. Okay. And one last thing, if I said, give the noble gas electron configuration for argon, you cannot just put argon 18. That doesn't tell us anything about the layout of the atoms, okay, or the electrons. So that is a no-go. What you'd have to do is you'd have to go up one more to neon and start from there. Then you could go uh, 3s2 and then 3p6, okay? Eight valence electrons, right? Tells us something. All right, don't just put argon 18, that's lazy, that doesn't work, scientists don't like that. Go up one to neon and then start from there. So that's electron configurations, guys, and hopefully that was just a quick little refresher for you, and hopefully you guys have an awesome day.